worship you, Father. Hallelujah. We worship you and give you praise. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Hallelujah. You've been more than good to us, God. You've been more than kind to us. Hallelujah. We love you. Hallelujah. This morning, God. Hallelujah. And we want to honor you. Hallelujah. We're grateful to your Father. Hallelujah. You didn't have to do it, but you did. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Father, hallelujah. You are holy, hallelujah. You are mighty, hallelujah. You are wonderful, hallelujah. And you are so worthy of the praise, God. You're worthy of the honor, God. You're worthy of the glory, hallelujah. So now, God, hallelujah, we need you to come in, God. Rest on us, God, today, God. Move on us today, God, hallelujah. We need your Father, hallelujah. We need your hallelujah like never before, God. So, God, in the name of Jesus, move by your Spirit, God, hallelujah. Send your anointing, hallelujah, for it's your anointing that destroys the yoke, hallelujah. We ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus to have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit. We invite you in, hallelujah. Let your love, hallelujah, take over, hallelujah. Let your peace take over, hallelujah. Let your joy consume us, God. Hallelujah. We bless your name, hallelujah. You're worthy, hallelujah. So
victory. I need you to hear you say victory. Say victory. Say victory. Say victory. Say victory. Say victory. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name, God. We love you more than anything, God. More than anything, God. More than anything, God. More than anything. And we won't give up, God. We won't give up, God. We choose to worship you, God. We choose to lay it all at the altar, God. We choose to let it go, God. We choose to let it go. Praise him. Help me worship. Help me worship.
up and say more, 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 say more, more, let me hear you say yeah, 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 from the Lord this morning, grab that hand next to you. Because that hand that's next to you is vital. That hand that's next to you is very important. And so as you grab in that hand, I want you to begin to call on the name of the Lord for her. Or call on the name of the Lord for him. Whoever they might be, while you're holding that hand next to you, I want you to start calling on Jesus right now. Because you can't fix it, but God can. You can't change it, but God can change it. You cannot rearrange it, but God can rearrange it. I can't heal it, but God can heal it. And he said in his word, where there are two or three gathered in his name, he comes down into the midst. And God is in the midst of this building right now. And he's ready to do something for you. He's ready to heal somebody. He's ready to restore life. He's ready to give peace. He's ready to bring deliverance right now. He's ready. He's ready. He's ready. The Spirit of God is in this atmosphere. And he's ready to give you more. You asked for more. You said you love him more. And now he's ready to release more. More strength. More faith. More peace. More endurance. More confidence. Like never before. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Baba Shandasi. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, this hand that we hold, we want to say thank you for them, Lord. We want to say we praise you for them, Lord. We want to say we honor you, Father, for my brother and for my sister today, Lord. Lord, we ask that you would touch and agree, Lord, that you would move like never before as we touch and agree today, God, that you would touch my brother, that you would touch my sister, that you would visit them right where they are. What, God, they need a visitation this morning. Father God, we need a miracle this morning. Lord, we need healing. We need deliverance. We need peace. We need strength. We need faith. We want more of your presence, God, for we understand where the presence of the Lord is. There is fullness of joy. So, Lord, I decree joy like never before. I decree freedom like never before. I bind every demon. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The blood of Jesus Christ is against you. The Lord rebuke you. We cancel out every assignment of suicide, of fear, of doubt, of unbelief, of depression. We command depression to go. We command it to go. We command it to go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We command doubt to go. Anxiety, get out in the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of hallucination we bind you in Jesus name spirit of anger bind you in Jesus name spirit of division we bind you in Jesus name spirit of strife we bind you in Jesus name we cancel out every evil and every wicked and every unclean thing and every wicked and evil spirit now in Jesus name and father we thank you for the victory father we praise you for the liberty father we honor you because whom the son sets free is free indeed touch my brother touch my sister touch those that did not even make it today those that are tuned in right now encouraged him lord reached him right where they are reach right through the network god and touch that heart touch that mind touch that spirit touch that soul we give you praise for it and now father because we know the devil is defeated we know the enemy is under our feet we say thank you jesus in jesus name and we give a celebration of praise by shouting amen and amen Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a celebration. Oh, yeah. 
whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And we got the victory through the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. Give God a praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do you believe God? I said, do you believe God? Do you trust God? Do you know that God is able? Do you know that God can do all? Whatever it is, even beyond what you can imagine, beyond what you can think, God is able. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, I dare you to give him a celebration. Give him a celebration. Celebrate your victory. Celebrate your open doors. Celebrate your open windows. Celebrate your miracle. Celebrate, celebrate. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. We love you, Father. We love you, Father. We love you, Father. We love you, God. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many love him today? How many believe him today? Huh? How many know he's able? Hallelujah. You walked in to a miracle. You walked into healing. You just walked in to victory. Huh? It's not that you didn't already have it, but your step of faith saying, I'm getting up and I'm going to go into the house of the Lord, you declare to your enemy that I'm walking into the house of victory, and I got victory. And if you know that you got victory, I dare you to celebrate your victory right now. Celebrate your victory right now. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God, we praise you. I want you to turn to your neighbor and welcome one another to Spiritfield Family Church. Welcome, welcome. I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell them just like this. Say, the devil is defeated and you got the victory. Welcome once again to Spiritfield Family Church this morning. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, so Every promise he made to you. So don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He's able. Somebody shout, He's able this morning. Somebody say, Lord, you're able. Thank you, Jesus. Once again, welcome to Spiritfield Family Church this morning. And I don't know about you, but I came into this house to walk into some new level of victory, some new level of glory. Amen. Somebody say, New level new dimensions of God's presence and his glory. Amen. Once again, welcome. we have any first-time visitors here for the first time, if this your first time staying, we wanted to see you, celebrate you. We're not going to put you on blast, but we do want to hug you. Come on, Spiritfield, celebrate our neighbors, celebrate our sister and our brothers. Hallelujah. And you know how we do it. If you're next to them, shake their hand, give them a big hug, show them the love of God. We want you to know when you come to Spiritfield Family Church, you walk in here a visitor, but you walk out of here family forever. So on the count of three, I want you to say in Spiritfield, one, two, three, welcome to the family. We welcome you in Jesus' name. We love you all. God bless you. Thanks for choosing to come and fellowship with us. Amen. Just a couple of quick announcements. This Friday night, this Friday night is new members class. So if you would like to be a part of this ministry and you would like to get more involved, come out this Friday at 7 o'clock, new members class. Also, baptism class as well and volunteer class is going on as well. So all three of those classes are available this Friday at 7. Remember, this Friday at 7. Also, Saturday, September the 6th, this Saturday, we're having a birthing meeting. Somebody say birthing. 
You say, what is this all about? Basically, it's our church, um, our church business and planning meeting, and we're going to do some new things. God already told us that year number nine, which is this year, this is our year at Spearfield, is the birthing year. And we're believing God is going to do some great and awesome things. Birth new vision, birth new ministry, birth new things. Amen. So this is birthing season. And so come out to the birthing meeting this Saturday at 10 a.m. Also, this Saturday, we're going to prepare ourselves for seven days of praise. For those of you who say, what is that? That is our every year annual church fasting and prayer. We come together every day for seven days to pray, worship, seek God, fasting and praying, believing God to fulfill his word. Amen. That will be September the 14th through the 21st. Again, September the 14th through 21st. We will have the pamphlets available for you by Saturday as well as by Sunday. Somebody give God a big praise for that. And we have another announcement by my lovely wife, First Lady Hart. Amen. Good morning. Praise the Lord, family. Hallelujah. I'm coming to you on behalf of You Know It, the Women of Purpose. Where you at in the house? Hallelujah. We are so excited about what God is doing for us. Amen. We are preparing for our yearly advance. It's going to be October the 7th, 8th. 9, 10, 11. Did she say five days? Yes, she did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Five days count. Tuesday night, we're going to be here at Spearfield Family Church. But Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we're going to be spending that time at Welk Resort. And what we want for you guys is to get ready, get prepared, amen. We have to have our rooms registered by September the 7th. So if you haven't gotten that done, I want to encourage you to do that. Hallelujah. And those of you who are saying, oh, man, you know, this is just a little tough. This came around a little bit fast. Hallelujah. We have sponsorships available, so I want you to go outside to the booth. You can see one of the ladies there, and you can sign up for that sponsorship. We have a limited amount of sponsorships available. But don't discount the God, the fact that God wants to bless you. Plus, we meet every Tuesday night right here at 7 o'clock p.m. where God is just having his way. Amen? So I want to give God glory for that, and you guys give glory for what God is doing in your life. Amen. Amen? Hallelujah. And speaking of our midweek, don't forget, come out on Wednesday night. We have a great time on Bible study night. Amen. Amen. It's, and we have Bible study like no other. It's exciting. We have a great time. The Holy Spirit moves, ministers through his word, but as well as he does other things among us. Amen. And so come out every Wednesday, 7 o'clock. Somebody say 7. Say that again, 7 o'clock. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, Freshwater Bible Study. Come on out. Now we're going to go ahead and take the Lord's offering this morning. Amen. I'm excited about Jesus. And how many know the Bible says that God...
36. Amen. Sing choir. Six through 52. While you're preparing your hearts, while you're going into the scripture, while you're standing out of reverence to the reading of God's word, I want you to open your hearts. 
Open your spirit, open your mind, open your soul to Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. It, do anybody feel like this? Here I am. Can you say that out of your heart? Lord, here I stand. Say, Lord, my life is in your hands. Say, Lord, I'm longing, I'm longing, I'm longing to see. Anybody that really feel that way in your heart to Jesus this morning? Oh God, said I give myself away so you can use me. Oh, I give myself away. I belong to you. I give myself away. Mark chapter 10, verse number 46 through 52, the Bible declares. Now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Let us pray. Father, we love and praise, honor, and glorify your name. We welcome you in this atmosphere, Axie, Lord, as I now move out of the way to decrease. Lord, you increase. You speak, breathe your word of life to me, through me, for me. Guide my tongue to declare only the truth and the oracles of God. Father, in Jesus' name, we bind every evil spirit that is going to try to steal this message from the hearts of your people. I thank you that every person in this room, Lord, heart is fertile, ready to receive, Father, every word that you have to speak. And I thank you, Father, that, Lord, your people are going to release harvest a hundredfold as this word is made manifested in their life. So, Lord, as I move out of the way, have thine own way. Have your way in this atmosphere. We bind you, Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. The blood of Jesus Christ is against you. You have no power, authority, or dominion over the children of God. We are the kingdom of God and we walk in victory for whom the sun sets free is free indeed in Jesus name now father have your way in Jesus name amen and amen before you sit down look at your neighbor right now and tell him just like this say your faith has made you well turn to somebody else that's going to catch it and say your faith has made you well now give God the biggest praise celebration that you can give him as you have your seats in the presence of the Lord on this morning, your faith has made you well. Hallelujah. As we get into the word of the Lord on this morning, amen, you will find that Jesus is now walking down a road. He's walking and taking a journey now at this time. He is with his disciples. And not only is he with his disciples, but he's also with a great multitude. The Bible says he entered into a place we call Jericho, and then he stayed for a moment, then he was leaving Jericho, and he got on the road. The first thing I want to do is point out to you this morning uh, the name Jericho. The Bible teaches that the name Jericho is actually to translate the moon city, in which that city was named basically after the moon. But when you do your research about studies about the moon, you would find that the moon is the lesser luminary of the heavens. But it is also a sign that there is a change in your season. 
I want you to turn to somebody really quick and say, neighbor, there is a change of season happening right now. I don't know about you, but I believe this with all of my heart, that despite of what the world's condition may feel like, despite of what the world is going through, despite of some of the things we have been dealing with, God, hallelujah, use every situation to work out something new in the lives of his people. Therefore, I believe with all of my heart that this is the season for the church to take a stance. This is the season for the children of the Most High God to take their position. This is the moment where God is now getting ready to move like a mighty Russian wind in and through and, and by the lives of his very chosen elect. Is there anybody in this building that know you are called and know that you are chosen by God? For the Bible tells us, amen, that the moon once again is also a symbol or it also points out that there is a change of season, amen, a change of season. You will find that the moon actually is made manifest in dark moments. I want you to catch this thing because it's very important that you understand that even in the midst of the darkest hour of your life, God can still shine light in the midst of it. Even in the midst of every dark situation, dark moment, when you talk about darkness, that basically means that you're in a position where you cannot see. That means that you're in a position that is gloomy. That means that you're dealing with hard times in your life. That means that you're dealing with trying times. Is there anybody in this church that have been dealing with some hard times, hard struggles, hard situations, feeling like it is hard for you to move on? I'm here to tell you if you are in this building that God's light, his glorious presence is shining in the midst of your dark moment but you have to believe God in order to walk in your miracle one of the things you must understand is that nobody can believe God for you all the way we can believe as much as we can but you got to take your faith to the next level if you're going to get what you need from God in this hour you have to rise up you have to stand up you have to believe you cannot lean on mama's faith anymore you cannot lean on the pastor's faith anymore you cannot lean on anybody else's faith it's time for you to have faith and believe God for yourself do I got anybody in here that got faith in God this morning. For the Bible tells us that as Jesus was leaving the place called Jericho, he got on the road, and as he was on the road, he entered, and he began to walk, and he came across a man, a blind man named Bartimaeus, in which when you study blindness in the natural, blindness can occur uh, actually in many different reasons or purposes. You will find that some people are born blind. Some people are born blind, and the reason why is because during childbirth, there was some kind of condition, some kind of sickness in the transition that caused the blindness on the child's eyes. Then you would find that some people were not born blind. They grew up but they experienced blindness because of either a sickness or a disease that hit them or some kind of traumatic experience. Now, what the Holy Spirit revealed to me in this is that there is many of us, and I'm going to say us because I'm in the same category, there is many of us in this room that have been dealing with some things that just made us sick. There's many of us in the room that have been dealing with circumstances that's getting on our nerve. There's many of us in this room that has been dealing with some trying times, some dark moments, some situations in our lives that has caused heaviness, that has caused us to look and see things in a different perspective. But I'm here to tell you that it don't matter how dark it is. It does not matter how cloudy it may seem. If you hook up to Jesus, something can happen for you in this room today if you would trust and believe God. Somebody shout, I believe God. You would find that blindness in the natural means that someone is not able to see. But if you take it a little deeper, it means that somebody has lost focus. Is there anybody that has been a little out of focus? Come on, somebody. I said, is there anybody in the building that's a little out of focus? Like even now, you're in the building, but right now your mind is somebody else. We are in the building, but right now you feel like, I don't know if I'm going to get through this. But I'm here to tell you that greater is he that is in us than he that is fighting against us. And all God wants you to do is trust and believe. Somebody say, I believe God. You would find that blindness can also mean that somebody has lost vision. Someone in this building has lost the vision that God wants you to see concerning your household. Somebody in here cannot see yourself past your conditions right now. There is somebody in the room right now feel like I'm going to depend on the government for the rest of my life. I'm going to depend on somebody for the rest of my life. For one of the things I come to realize uh, that those who walk in blindness will actually feel like they have to depend on everybody 
and don't know what they got within themselves. You would find that people who operate with a blindness in their spirit is people who will walk around, watch this, and run into people hurting themselves and others. Somebody in here been hurting somebody. Uh -huh. Touch somebody next to you and say, neighbor, we got to get these blindfolds off. We got to get the blindfolds off. We got to come out of the blindness. Amen. You will find that those who walk in blindness will not only cause themselves to fall, but will take everybody with them and cause other people to fall. People who are operating in blindness is operating through hurt, through selfishness, through fear, through doubt, and through unbelief. But somebody in this building is coming out of your fear. Somebody in this building is coming out of your doubt. Somebody in the building is getting released from anger. Somebody is getting released from your jealousy. Somebody is getting released from your uncleanness or your sin. Somebody is going to get a breakthrough and let go of the offense that people has done unto you. Somebody is going to get a breakthrough and learn to forgive people and love people and see people through the eyes of God because those who operate in blindness cannot see the true value of true relationship. There's a lot of us in here, we're in relationships, but we are blind to the value of it. We're in the midst of family, but we are blind by the anger or the unforgiveness or the hurt that somebody has presented or brought upon me. And because I have been blind by these circumstances, somebody else say, I got a great family, but financially I am struggled. When there's somebody that's so worried about your life that you cannot see the way out, but Jesus has stepped into the room and he's getting ready to do something something that is exceedingly abundantly above all you can actually think but it's going to start with your faith do I got at least two or three people up in this building that believe God enough that trust God enough that know that God is able I dare you to give him some real praise right now uh, see, I, I've come to realize that people who operate in blindness, people who operate in blindness cannot actually experience the true meaning of life. They cannot experience the things that are surrounding them. Only thing they can do is be led by their ear, and the enemy has been in a lot of people's ears in this building, but God is getting ready to change that conversation. He's getting ready to put some word in your belly this morning in such a way that it's going to shake your atmosphere, shake your family life, shake your ministry life shake your household in a way you never saw him shake it before is there anybody that want a shaking in this building I dare you to tell God thank you for the shaking one of the things I come to realize here in the text is that Bartimaeus was sitting. The Bible says that blind Bartimaeus was the son of Timaeus, and he sat by the road. Instead of being on it, he sat by it. And God has revealed to us in this service today is that there is a lot of people in this room who are sitting by your blessing, but you can't obtain it. There's a lot of people in the atmosphere who are sitting by a serious breakthrough, sitting by your purpose. You are sitting by your destiny. You are right there, right next to it, right there. It's right in front of you. But I'm so blinded by how they treat me, I can't get on the road. I'm so blinded by how people are, I can't seem to get on the road. I'm so blinded by what's going on in my life. I'm broke. I can pull my pockets out. Got nothing in it. I'm so blind by what I'm dealing with, I can't get on the road. There's something in front of me I cannot obtain because of the blindness that's on the inside of me. I'm blinded by anger, blinded by hatred, blinded by unforgiveness, blinded by pride, blinded by my own jealousy, blinded by insecurity, blinded by depression, blinded by anxiety. And God is saying, blind Bartimaeus, I'm here. I'm walking your way. Now the Bible says, the Bible says that he heard, touch somebody, say, neighbor, what are you listening to? Uh -huh. See, he couldn't see his way out, but he had ears to hear. And the Bible says uh, that he heard uh, that Jesus was on the road. Slap two or three and say, neighbor, I heard uh, that Jesus was on the move for you. I heard that Jesus Christ is operating in spirit field this morning. I, I heard that Jesus has walked into the building and the Bible says when he 
heard that Jesus of Nazareth, I like that word Nazareth because when you study it, it's the same word when you study Nazareth, it's the very place that, that, that the Bible says that the two brothers said, can anything good come out of that place? Touch somebody and say, neighbor, Jesus has been through the worst of the worst for you. He has taken everything for you. He has been punished, beaten, spit on, lied on, and cheated for you. Jesus been there, he's done that, and he came out of that so he's eligible to bring you out uh -huh. touch somebody and say he's eligible uh -huh. he's eligible to bring you through so he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was on the road so he began to cry out this is the problem with us is when Jesus is moving we stop talking when Jesus is moving people stop praising and, and and I have to imagine in my spirit he's on the road now and there's a multitude of people and his disciples with him so all types of people were there hear me I'm talking about people who were prostitutes I'm talking about drug dealers I'm talking about ex gang bangers I'm talking about lesbians I'm talking about homosexuals and they were all walking next to Jesus because they knew they could get the breakthrough through him see that you can't get it from everybody else you gotta find you some Jesus so I can get free because people can't set me free only the son can set me free uh, somebody shout hallelujah and see and, and that's why you don't get puzzled when you see all walks of life walk in the church if all walks of life don't go to church then the church not doing its job but if you can go to church and you can see the thug sitting there with the drunk sitting there and the lesbian sitting there and the homosexual in there and the adulterer is all there and everybody's in there because they need a breakthrough and they need a word from God and they need real deliverance then that's the place to be because I want to be where God can really set me free. So, Jesus had a, a big party, a big group walking with him. And I have to imagine that while he was on his journey, he was greeting people. God bless you. How you doing? I'm the Messiah. Good to see you. I'm going to have to believe he's touching people that's touching him. Breakthrough is happening for everybody. But there's blind Bartimaeus who's sitting there and he heard, Jesus is in the house, but I ain't got a breakthrough yet. What do you do when everybody around you get broke through? What do you do when you sitting on the side of the journey and everybody is on the journey and everybody seem to get blessed? people are getting their breakthrough. People are getting their healing. See, this is the problem with the church. When you see your neighbor get a breakthrough, you get mad at the neighbor. You get jealous of your neighbor. You start hating on the neighbor. Oh, 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 why she got to get, oh, oh, who's made her better than me? Oh, oh, instead of getting like that, getting envious of her or him or mad at them, I want you to open up your mouth and say, wait a minute, Jesus is in the deliverance business and I am not going to sit here and be quiet like I don't need a breakthrough. So the Bible says that blind Bartimaeus began to cry out. He didn't get quiet. He started screaming. See, that's why I don't go to quiet churches. Quiet churches don't get no real breakthrough. I, I'm doing a, <laughs> folks be sitting in there in bondage, ain't getting no breakthrough. The devil is alive. I'm getting ready to get a breakthrough. Do you not know demons scream loud in your ear? Demons are not quiet when they're telling you in your head to commit suicide. They're not quiet when they're telling you in your head you're going to not live, you're going to die. Demons are not quiet when they're all in your head telling you you're going to lose everything you got. Demons ain't, are not quiet. Let me use the proper English. They are not quiet. So why are you sitting around always being quiet? Open up your mouth and shout. He heard that Jesus was in the room. So he starts screaming, Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. To call him Jesus is to say, you're the only one that can save me. To call him the son of David means that I know that you are the promised Messiah, promised through the lineage of David. When you call him son of David, that also word David means God loves me. So when he screamed Jesus, he says, save me because I know you love me. 
Lift your voice and say, Jesus, save me. I know you love me. So he cries out to Jesus. <laughs> now, I want you to get something now. Because the louder you get, the more haters you get. When you start screaming, calling on the name of the name of Jesus, Jesus! Haters start. <laughs> Please don't shout. Don't be next to somebody and be. They're going to be. You're going to get some folks that's not going to like your praise. You're going to have some folks that's not going to like your shout. They're going to think you annoying. Oh, my goodness. Help me go. Slap two or three high five and say, neighbor, I don't mind. Please, please forgive me. I don't mean to annoy you, but I got a praise in my belly that I got to let out of me, and I ain't got time to waste no games. I got to praise him. I got to shout. So, because folks will get mad at you when you get too loud, you know. Folks get up and run out. Oh, this is too much for me. I can't handle all of this. Why are you screaming? As a matter of fact, I done taught you this before. When the devil starts screaming, scream louder. <laughs> See, as soon as, as soon as, as soon as they get ready to scream at you and yell and cuss you out, instead of cussing back, just, just, <laughs> Hallelujah! Just scream out, oh, thank you, Lord. Walk around your house, oh, praise you, Jesus. He screamed, Jesus, son of David, have mercy. Go to the next verse. Then all of a sudden, the haters show up in 49. And the Bible says that the haters shows up. And when the haters show up, they say, they say, be quiet. See, Haters will tell you to stop screaming and stop shouting. Stop. Won't you be quiet? Won't you just sip it? Won't you shut your mouth? You talk too much. You're too loud. Why are you making all that noise? And then sometimes it's not even people. It's you. Sometimes, sometimes you're telling yourself to stop. I don't know why I'm doing all of this. I tried that. Pastor told me to come into the church and give God a shout. I shouted and I still didn't come out. I shout. He told me to jump up and turn around three times and he was, God was going to unwind me from some stuff and I still feel like I'm all tied up. You need to tell yourself, self, you stop making all that record and give God a prayer. You need to make yourself worship. Make yourself rejoice. Make yourself. So he's screaming. They saying, "Be quiet." See, every, the louder you get in your praise, the louder the enemy start talking in your spirit. So the enemy start getting all into your spirit, talking about you need to be quiet. You ain't gonna get free from that. You need to stop all that. You ain't gonna. You ain't gonna do nothing but get a little small breakthrough. Go home right back to your little drama. You, your man ain't gonna change. Your wife ain't gonna never change. Your kids will never change. It's gonna be the same old, same old. You same old mess at work. You didn't shout it to God, and then you gonna go to work, and they gonna still be crazy there. I, just, just why are you making all that noise? And instead of blind Bartimaeus sitting there listening to the negative. Activity, the Bible says that he opened up his mouth and he cried out even the more. So he told himself, I'm going to keep on praising. So the Bible says he went from Jesus, son of David, to Jesus. He screamed louder. How loud, how bad do you want your breakthrough? How bad do you want him to move for you? Because when you really want something, <laughs> you won't let nothing stop you from getting it. So he screams louder, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He screams really loud. And the Bible says he screamed all the more. But this time, this time, it moved Jesus. There was a praise, see. The word, the, words, the word cry out can mean anything from shouting, screaming, wailing, yelling, or even praising. And the Bible says that, that, that this man gave a praise, the enemy tried to talk him out of it, but then he screamed out a praise so strong that it shook Jesus. <laughs> Do you not know that there is a praise that can come out of you 
that while Jesus is on the move, while he's in the atmosphere of the church, while he's moving for your sister, while he's touching on your brother and blessing him, while he's doing that, there is a praise you can render that will literally cause him to say, okay, Larry, and then look at you. There is a praise that moved him. And the Bible says he screamed so loud that the Bible says, so Jesus stood still. He stopped. Who's praising me like that? Who have the nerve to have no money getting ready to be evicted and got a nerve to scream like that? Who in the world? What kind of, who, who has the nerve that after they didn't been diagnosed with cancer and you not going to live to just, who told, what? Who has the nerve to after you didn't have an accident, now you on the bus and you said, you, you, what? You still got a praise like that? Who has the nerve to praise like that after that divorce? So, it made him stand still. He stood still. And the Bible says, then he gave a command. Slap two or three high five and say, God is commanding you to come forth. You didn't shook him enough that now he's given a command. Here's my command. Get up. It's your time to come forth. Get up. It's your time to make move. Get up. It's your time to come out. Get up. It's your time to get in. So the Bible says that he stood still and he commanded him to be what? Carried up. He said, tell him to come here. Call him over here to me. And then, and then after, after the breakthrough, after, after he broke a praise out that moved Jesus, stopped Jesus, told, and Jesus said, yeah, look, give me, here's the order. Tell him to come over here. Tell him. I want him because he know how to praise even despite his problem. I want him, the one that know how to shout and not be hateful against everybody. I want her, the one that know how to give me some praise even though she don't feel like she can do it. I want her that don't let enemies get to her. I want him that don't let people talk him out of that. You, you come here. You come. And the Bible says that after the command, the very people around him that said, be quiet, they start being his friend. See, here it is. When God gives a word that you are getting ready to come out, even your worst enemy will start trying to befriend you. And, and, and they, so they say stuff like, so they say, as the Bible says, they turn around and say, oh, be of good cheer. First you told me to be quiet. Now you want me to be, oh yeah, for real, huh? You said be quiet. Stop talking. Now now that Jesus is looking at, see Jesus looking at me now. See, now Jesus is in my life now. Now you want me to be a good cheer. See, when you have nothing, people don't want to look at you. But when it's your time to get a miracle, everybody want to be your best friend. Everybody want to get your phone number. All of a sudden, they got you on the hip. And they beeping you. They texting you. They calling you. They Facebook you. They do everything they can do to find you because they didn't found out that Jesus stopped to talk to you and now Jesus is there now they saying be of good cheer cheer up rise he's calling you they trying to act like they have always been on your team you know there's some people that know it's your season to get a breakthrough and they want to be connected to you to walk right there with you to try to act like they have you ever had somebody try to act like they had something to do with your miracle Y'all better stop playing with me up in here. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, have you ever had somebody that was never there, but as soon as God visited you, they wanted to act like they gave you the prophecy to get the... God made a way for me to get that miracle. And then that very one that was telling you to stop all of that, they the very ones that say, man, I told you the Lord was going to do it. Oh, I told you that God can heal. I told you that your job was coming. You remember by way back then, about 15 years ago, Elder, I told you that the Lord said that you was going to be here and this was going to happen. They was the very ones that was saying you wasn't going to make it. I need to somebody that know that God can do it to give God a praise so verse 50 verse 50 says verse 50 says it says this man got smart here because not only did he have enough faith to not listen to all that junk going on all that drama going on telling him to be quiet and I want you to catch this he didn't even pay attention to that cheer either <laughs> listen to me stop paying attention to people 
cheering you on. Don't get caught up in somebody cheerleading you. You cannot allow yourself to be tied to somebody else's praise about you because when they not praising you, you will stop doing what God wants you to do. But when people... So he wasn't paying attention to their negativity, saying stop. He didn't pay attention to when they celebrated. Cheer up. God is here. He was like, whatever, man. I still see Jesus. And the Bible said he got so bold that it says he took his garment off. Slap two or three high fives and say, take off the garment. Say it again, take off the garment. The Bible says he stripped himself of the garment. Now, the garment here in the text is the Bible teaches that people would actually wear special garments when they were sick or when they were blind. They had a special garment that would show that they had this condition in their life so that people can identify them and recognize what they were going through. Oh, there is a certain way people see you right now. But when it's all over, they're going to see you totally different. As a matter of fact, folks not going to even recognize you because of the big breakthrough that God's going to give you. Some people are not going to even understand what happened to you. They're going to say, is that Jim? You mean to tell me Jim, the one that was all, every time you talk to him, he had a slur in his mouth? Because he was always drunk. Now he's talking straight. Is that him? They knew you to be somebody stressed out. They knew you. They identified you as defeated. They identified you as a man that sat on a corner and never made it. They identified you as a woman who was abused and never would have a man. They identified you through your condition. But as of today, God said, take off that condition. Take off that attitude. Take off how they treated you. Take Uh-huh. So, this is your condition. This is the identity that everybody see by you. They see you as somebody defeated. They see you as a, he said, he said, Jesus called it what? He took off his garment threw it, cast it aside, and he ran over to Jesus. And when he got before Jesus, Jesus opened his mouth and answered, what do you want me to do for you? Touch somebody and say, neighbor, there is a praise that you can give God that will move God in such a way that he will stop. He'll look at you and say, daughter, son, what do you want me to do for you? People on the road didn't care about you people down the street didn't care about you people you live with at home didn't care about you but there is a praise that God can give you out of your belly that will shake the very atmosphere you're in that will cause God to stop and say what do you want slap somebody high five and say neighbor what do you want him to do for you no Woo. <laughs> now, now get this, get this. Watch this, watch this. Watch this. He didn't get Jesus' attention and then just sit there. See, this is our problem. We get right in the midst of the breakthrough. It's right there. But then when Jesus said, what you want? We sit there all puzzled, huh? What do you want God to change for you? Well, I don't know. What do you want God to move for you? Well, see, there's some of us that, that not only do we get breakthroughs and, and things like that, but some of us, some of us don't even know what we're expecting. What are you expecting? Why did you walk in here? Did you walk in here just to say, I did it? Or did you walk in here because you say, I'm expecting God to change me? change my condition at home change my financial situation change my physical condition change my heart God change my mind he said what do you want me to do for you and the blind man said rabbi that I may receive my sight he said I want to see again I want to see with clarity I'm tired of seeing darkness because those who are physically blind, they only can see 
darkness. And he said, I'm tired of seeing darkness. I'm tired, watch this, catch this, somebody gonna get it. I'm tired of only seeing alcohol. I'm tired of seeing this homosexual relationship. I'm tired of seeing this adultery. I'm tired of seeing this hatred. I'm tired of seeing this animosity. I'm tired of seeing this anxiety. I'm tired of seeing only darkness. I want to see with clarity. I want to see the light. I want to see again. I want victory, God. And the Bible says, Rabbi, that I may receive my sight so Jesus answered to him and the Bible says that when Jesus spoke to him go to 52 it says that Jesus answered him and said don't be afraid snap two or three high five and say neighbor don't be afraid he said go your way <laughs> for your faith has made you well hold on I'm not done yet I can't, I can't even work that faith there until I tell you to go your way no more fear. No more stress. No more doubt. It's time for you to go your way. Catch this. Someone who's blind has to go the way somebody takes them. Somebody who's blind has to go wherever people lead them. But somebody who hears from God can detach themselves from people and start going. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is your season to start going the way God has called you to go. This is your season to be all that God has called you to be. This is your season to become what God anointed you to become. You don't have to be led by nobody's feelings no more. You don't have to be led by somebody's attitude. You don't have to let people mistreat you and cause you to walk around like you don't know where you're going. No more being led by anger. No more being led by hatred. No more being led by things. But now you can go your way. Why? Because your faith has made you well. Stop worrying about him and say thank you Lord that my faith has brought healing and deliverance. I dare somebody to jump up right now and give God a praise where you are. Somebody tell him thank you. Somebody tell him thank you. Somebody cry out to him. Somebody call on the name of God. Your faith Your faith has got you well. Your faith brought that job. Your faith brought your peace. Your faith brought your healing. Your faith saved that marriage. Your faith, your faith, your faith. Not mama's faith, not daddy's faith, not pastor's faith alone. Your faith. Somebody say your faith. Somebody say your faith. Somebody say your faith. I need somebody that got a praise in your lips. You tired of seeing darkness? You tired of seeing through problems? You tired of seeing through issues? God said, now walk by faith. Your faith. I don't like how they are to me. No, 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 no. Get out of that. Your faith. I don't like the way people treat me. No, no, no. Worry about that. Your faith. I don't like what I'm going through. Hey, 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 your faith. If you can have faith, you will stop God in his tracks. If you can have faith, you'll move God to move for you. If you can have faith enough and praise him enough and surrender enough and say, God, it's all about you, then miracles can start happening for you. Is there anybody that want a real breakthrough? Lift your voice like a trumpet and sound the alarm. God said if you cry out and if you praise him and if you call on God, call on the name of Jesus, Jesus, son of David, Jesus, son of God, have mercy on me, have mercy on my babies, have mercy on my marriage, have mercy on my body, have mercy, God, Jesus, I need your help, Jesus, I need a breakthrough, Jesus, I need a revival, Jesus, 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 Jesus. help me. Is there anybody that need a miracle? Is there anybody that want freedom? Is there anybody that want revival? Shout Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. I'm about to lose it all. 
have mercy on me. I'm about to lose my mind. Have mercy on me. I'm about to lose my life. Have mercy on me. I can't make it alone. Have mercy on me. I can't deal with this family no more. Have mercy on me. I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. Have mercy on me. I don't know if I want to go to work Tuesday. Have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David. Jesus, I need you. I'm tired. I've been led astray. I don't want to sit on the side of my purpose. Need it longer. But I want to walk in it. I want to achieve it. I want to maintain it. I want to grab hold. Jesus, son of David, have mercy. Jesus, son of David, have mercy. Jesus, son of David, have mercy. Have mercy on me. And he says, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Snatch somebody out of their seat next to you. And tell us, I don't mean you no harm, but God said your faith has made you well. What are you going to do to believe God? Now, this man's faith, catch this, this man's faith, this is how, this is how blind Bartimaeus proved his faith. Are you ready? This is how he proved his faith. Bartimaeus proved his faith by, number one, when they said, be quiet, he got louder. He said, uh, I'm not listening to you, I believe God. I'm not hearing you. I hear God. God is here. I heard he was. I'm not hearing that negative spirit. I'm hearing from God. So, number one, he proved his faith by listening to God, not listening to people. He cried out louder when they told him to be silent. But then, number two, he proved his faith by throwing them garments aside. He said, I don't need you to see me this way no more. I'm not going to let life put a garment on me. Somebody tell your neighbor, say, take off garments of poverty. Take off that garment of anxiety. Take off that garment of fear. Take off that garment of stress. And instead of putting on those garments of negative, he said, put on the positive. Put on the garments of salvation. Put on the garment of praise. I need somebody to put on the garment of the spirit. If you really want a real revival, open up your mouth and put on the new garment. It's time for you to change your clothes. Change in the spirit. Put on a new attitude. Put on a new attitude. Put on a new, that's what it is. Your garment is symbolic to your attitude. Stop walking around with an attitude of defeat. Walk around with an attitude, it's done. Let people see it on you. Let people see the glory. Let people see you victorious. You might not be there in the physical yet, but walk around like it's already hooked in. I, I don't care. I'm praising God for healing. Even if I got to walk, limp it with a smile. Hey! I'm changing my attitude. I'm changing the way I view people. I'm changing the way I retreat people. Change your garment. And your faith will make you well. Your faith today in Jesus Christ will make you well. Your faith will change everything because faith is not only believing God, but believing him so much that you take action. You take action. You take action. Now watch this, because faith is the very medium by which the power of God is made manifested in your life. So when you're walking by faith, the glory of God will hit your life. God is looking for somebody that's going to say, I am well. 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 Come on, get up, get up on your feet and give God some worship. Your faith, your faith, your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. While your hands are lifted. While your hands are lifted. Your heart is open. Somebody in this building, here's the reality. You say, Pastor, I am blind, Bartimaeus. 
I have been sitting by the side of my purpose, on the side of my destiny. And I've been listening to everybody go by me because I can't see clear. So I can hear them go by me. I've heard what people have come through. I've heard the testimony of how God blessed him. I've heard how God delivered them, how God blessed their marriage for 20 years. I've heard all these great reports, but I, I, I can't seem right now to get into that place. But now I've heard that Jesus has come in. The same Jesus that has blessed this multitude that I'm hearing is the same Jesus that is walking my way. And I'm ready to get off the side of the road and get on the road. For the Bible says, as we get ready to transition, it says that after he received his sight, he got on the road and he followed after Jesus. So God wants to know, is there anybody in this building that want to get on the road? Do you want to get on the road and begin to follow Jesus? I guarantee you today that if you get on this road and surrender your heart, your will, your life to Jesus Christ and follow him as your savior, let him lead you, He's not going to be like people who led blind Bartimaeus and set him on the side of it. But Jesus is going to lead you right in to your purpose. And if you want that, I want you to walk down this road right here. Walk down this road right here and come meet the Lord at the altar. Come and meet him at this altar. Come on. Because... to Jesus this morning. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Speak to God today. My brother, oh, my knees, oh, my Lord, you're in. Oh, my child, oh, my You're my, my, my. And I worship you, Lord. Jesus. Those of you that have come down to this altar, God is getting ready to give you back your sight. He's going to give you your sight. And your first step of receiving your sight is to confess before God that you need him. So I want you to state this statement of confession out of your heart. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I confess I am a sinner. I have fallen short of your glory. I believe with all of my heart and I confess with my mouth. You came, you died, you rose again for my sins. Come into my heart, save my soul, empower me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, I am forgiven and I am saved. Now say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. You have no power, you have no authority, you have no dominion over my life anymore. I am born again. I am free. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed in Jesus Christ's name. Somebody give God a praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Now I want all of you at the altar, I want you to close your eyes. Because the next step is to get free from whatever it is that's blinding you. Some of you are blinded by pain. Some of you are blinded by hate. Somebody else is blinded by fear. Someone else is blinded by doubt. You might be blinded by unbelief, but today God is going to release your sight. Release your sight. Come on, deacons, release your sight. Release your sight. 
in the name of Jesus, receive your sight. In the name of Jesus, receive your sight. In the name of Jesus, receive your sight. In the name of Jesus, receive your sight. Depression gotta go. No more anxiety. No more depression. No more fear. No more unbelief. Come on, I need the church worshiping and praising. Receive your sight. Receive it. Oh! 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 Hallelujah. Receive your sight. Receive your sight. In Jesus' name. Receive it and believe it, my. By his stripes, I speak healing. I speak complete healing. Oh! Oh! Thank you, Lord. Receive it. Receive it. Jesus, receive your sight. Jesus name, receive your sight. Jesus name, Jesus name, Jesus name, Jesus name, Jesus name, Jesus name. Come on, church, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Jesus name. Oh, Jesus name. Freedom. 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 Finish. Oh, oh, receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Power of God is at this altar. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Oh, God. See that? Power of God. Lord, I worship you. Jesus' name. Receive it. Jesus' name. Ah! Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Oh. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Receive your sight. on high. there's anybody else in the audience that need prayer, we want to take you, take the middle aisle. We're going to dismiss this service. Take the middle aisle. If you're still at this altar and you need any more additional prayer, additional prayer, our ministers are going to stay right here to pray for you. 
If you do not need prayer, we're going to dismiss so we can transition to our third service. Father, we want to say thank you for love and grace. Keep your people as we leave out of the building but not your presence. Drive with them along the road. Strengthen their faith. I thank you for the victory. For whom the Son says free is free indeed. Until we come back together again this week, God, to worship you yet once again if you tarry. We'll be careful to honor you in all we say and do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Thanks for coming to the 11 o'clock service here at Spirit Field Family Church. Ministers, begin to pray. Begin to pray.